Hello. So in this video, we're going to talk about Atoll Fugard, uh, John Connie, and Winston Shona's play Sizwe Bansi is Dead, uh, which is published in this lovely collection called Statements, uh, along with a couple of other plays devised between these, these three men. Um, for the sake of convenience, I'm going to be referring primarily to Fugard, uh, because he's the sort of formal author, but Sizwe Bansi is Dead, along with the other two plays from this collection, were devised between uh, the three men, John Connie and Winston Shona, who were uh, actors that, that Fugard worked with extensively in the 1970s, um, and possibly beyond. You know, at least in the 1970s, he worked extensively with the, these two guys, who were really spectacular actors, by the way. Uh, if you ever get to see video of, of them uh, performing anything, they're really amazing. Um, and so one of the things that they did, um, they got, uh, Fugard especially, got really interested in Jerzy Grotowski's uh, idea for the poor theater, which um, was really quite an effective approach to making theater under apartheid South Africa if you wanted that theater to have black actors, colored actors, in addition to uh, white actors, or white, uh, in this case, writers and directors, which is uh, primarily what Fugard was. Um, and so one of the things that they sort of worked on was this idea of devising and improvising and building out of, building ideas out, or build, building plays, performances out of small scale ideas, key images or uh, particular objects or things like this. And so this was, was something that they did. And so Sizwe Bansi is Dead is kind of built out of these sets of, of photographs that uh, Fugard had found. Um, like most of Fugard's work, particularly prior to the end of apartheid, um, it is a political play and it is an anti-apartheid play. Um, now I've read a bunch of Fugard's plays. I, I think he's an amazing playwright. He's one of my favorite playwrights in the world. Um, and Sizwe Bansi is Dead is, prom is one of my favorite of his plays. I, I would say this and Master Harold and the Boys are definitely my top two Fugard plays. That being said, the structure of Sizwe Bansi is Dead is not particularly good. So this is a play in two halves. The first half um, is set in Stiles' photography studio. Um, and it's... Um, uh, Stiles is a, is a photographer who basically tells <clears throat> the story of how he got his photography studio. And he introduces us to a lot of the themes of the play. Um, the limited freedoms, the limited mobility, the limited options faced by black and colored people in apartheid South Africa, as well as uh, the theme of memory, possession of the self through memory, and identity. Um, then the second half of the play, we have this character who in the script is called the man, um, or just man, actually, um, because he has two identities. He is both Sizwe Bonsi and Robert Zelinzima. So um, what happens, what, what the second half revolves around is this transition from the one identity to the other in the context of the bureaucratic and authoritarian regime of apartheid South Africa. 
particularly concerned with what was called the reference book or the pass book. Um, and I'm going to put some pictures of, of reference books over the screen here so you can get a sense of what these were. Every black person, colored person, um, I think the, the term, the other term was Asians, um, which was, was largely what largely Indians, Pakistanis, South Asians. Um, I think that was the, the third ethnic term of apartheid, um, and then whites. But definitely blacks and coloreds had to carry a passbook at all times, sometimes called the dumb pass, um, which uh, South Africans would sometimes make a joke uh, that it was the pass for dumb people. Uh, it's kind of a gallows humor that you get to a certain extent in, in Sizwe Bonsi is Dead. But um, one of the things that we get extensively in this, um, in this second half of the play, is a good sense of how regimented and controlled the life of black and colored South Africans was under apartheid. Um, <clears throat> so Sizwe Bansi has come from King Williamstown to Port Elizabeth. Um, yeah, uh, sorry, to Port Elizabeth, um, which is a much bigger city. Uh, King Williamstown is a sort of small, rural, I say, I want to say rural community, but rural in the sense of like South Africa out in almost desert conditions where there's, there's sort of scrub grass and things like this. Uh, not rural in the sense of like that we tend to think of in, in say the U.S. where we think of like rolling fields where you can grow a lot of great stuff. Like, this is an area where gold mining, in very inhumane conditions, is, is one of the key occupations. Um, and so, Sizwe Bansi ha has come to Port Elizabeth seeking work. He can't find work, and he gets caught sleeping at his friend's house, and he gets taken to uh, these bureaucrats. Um, and basically, they mark his reference book, his passbook, that says he can't stay in Port Elizabeth, he has to go back to King Williamstown. Um, and so he's with his friend Buntu, who, who's the sort of driving force of this second half. Um, Buntu reads from the, the stamp in the reference book, you are required to report to the Bantu Affairs Commissioner, King Williamstown, within three days of the above mentioned date for the, you should have been home yesterday for the purpose of repatriation to your to home district. Influx control. You're in trouble, Sizwe. The man says, I don't want to leave Port Elizabeth. Ubuntu says, maybe, but if that book says go, you go. The man says, can't I, uh, can't I maybe burn this book and get a new one? Ubuntu says, burn that book? Stop kidding yourself, Sizwe. Anyway, suppose you do. You, you must immediately go apply for a new one, right? And until that new one comes, be careful the police don't stop you and ask for your book. Into the courtroom, brother. Charge failing to produce reference book on demand. Five rand or five days. Finally, the new book comes. Down to Labor Bureau for a stamp. It's got to be endorsed with permission to be in this area. White man at the Labor B Bureau takes the book, looks at it, doesn't look at you. Goes to the big machine and feeds in your number. Ubuntu goes through the motions of punching out a number on a computer. Card jumps out. He reads, Sizwe Bonsi, endorsed King Williamstown. Takes your book, fetches that same stamp, and in it goes again. So you burn that book, or throw it away, or get another one. Same thing happens. Sizwe Bonsi, endorsed to King Williamstown. Stamp goes in the third time. But this time it's also into a van and off to the native commissioner's office. Card around your neck with your number on it. Escort on both sides and back to King Williamstown. They make you pay for the train fare, too. So this is, I mean, this is a system that 
was used in apartheid South Africa to heavily regiment people's movements. Um, it was, and, and, and says way Bonsi brings this up, um, it, it was originally presented as a way of organizing and streamlining people's lives. Um, uh, he says, they never told us it would be like that when they introduced it. They said, book of life, your friend, you'll never get lost. They told us lies. So we've got this, this critique of the passbook system. Um, and it's, it's really quite a, a daring political statement in 1970, hold on one second, uh, 1972. Um, and then what happens with the penis books, uh, Buntu and Sizwe have gone out to a club and they've, they've actually had quite a nice time and they're, they're coming home and they find a dead body, and the dead body of Robert Zwilinzima. And Buntu realizes, because he, he takes the, the passbook from this dead body, and that and Robert Zwilinzima had permission to look for a job in Port Elizabeth. And so what Buntu realizes is that he can switch the pictures from Sizwe Bonse and Robert Zwilinzima. They can burn Sizwe Bonse's book and they can give him Zulinzima's book with his picture in it, and that will free him up to look for work in Port Elizabeth. Um, and so this is what they do. They, Bonsi disappears, Sizwe Bonsi dies in the sense that the person who had been Sizwe Bonsi becomes Robert Zulinzima in order to look for work in this town. Um, and so this is, this is one of the, the great political statements of the play, is this notion of becoming a ghost, becoming, giving up your, your full humanity because the apartheid system demands it. And we get this in different ways throughout the play. And one of my favorites, is I, one of my favorite parts is actually in the first half of the play, where we're in Stiles' uh, photography shop, he's looking at all of these pictures that he's got on the wall. Um, and he says, you must understand one thing. We own, he's talking to the audience here, by the way. We own nothing except ourselves. This world and its laws allows us nothing except ourselves. There's nothing we can leave behind when we die except the memory of ourselves. I know what I'm talking about, friends. I had a father and he died. Here he is, my father, that's him, pointing to a picture on the display board. Fought in the war, Second World War. Fought at Tobruk in Egypt. He fought in France so that this country and all the others could stay free. When he came back, they stripped him at the docks. His gun, his uniform, the dignity they'd allowed him for a few mad years because the world needed men to fight and be ready to sacrifice themselves for something called freedom. In return, they let him keep his scoff tin and gave him a bicycle, size 28. I remember because it was too big for me. When he died in a rotten old suitcase amongst some of his rags, I found that photograph. That's all. That's all I have from him. So, at the same time that we've got this very direct political message about the oppression of apartheid South Africa, the oppression of the passbook system or the reference book system, we've also got this more existential critique of the apartheid system because it strips away even the most basic things that make a person human and it, it forces them it forces that person those people to give up the things that the most basic things that we all as human beings uh, have, which is our identity, who we are.